Greetings, my brothers and sisters. This, I would say, is one of the most important videos I've ever done. It's something that I feel very strongly and passionate about. There's just so much talk going on about repentance, forgiveness and sins. Well, truth is we all fall short of being perfect. We're all sinners. Even after we're saved, we still sin on a daily basis. Not that it's intentional, but we live in world control by such greed and hatred. It's not funny. We need to remember where we came from and we need to remember that we are children of the light and never take for granted how blessed we are to be loved by our Father. We talk about going back to the basics, back to the beginning. The answers were never meant to be complicated and they're right there in the Bible. This is where we need to look for the answers first. Jesus himself clearly blessed us with how we should and should not pray in Matthew 6. So although you may have said this prayer a thousand times over, I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch you while I give my explanation of what each line means in this prayer. See, when Jesus gave us this prayer, first he taught us in Matthew 6, 1 to 8, how not to pray. For example, Matthew 6, 7 is, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Then in Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13, it's not just a prayer, although it's a beautiful prayer in whole, but is actually segregated into sections of what we need in life. See, each section is special and divine within itself. Some may say this prayer is a repetitive prayer without really looking at every single line and what each line is actually saying. But when the penny drops, you'll see it in its full glory. You see, this prayer bears the best fruit of life when we realise what it's really about. So let's begin with the very first line, Our Father. Children of God who call God their Father, such a privileged way to address God and the closest personal level as our Father. He's not asking us opening his prayer to address him as our God or dear God or dear Creator, dear Alpha and Omega. He's made it very personal that we are his child. Our Father is the opening line. The second line is which art in heaven. This is acknowledging the divine kingdom at which our Father lives in, where, where we long to be. It's, this, it's just basically recognising that where he lives, where our Father lives. The third line is, hallowed be thy name. Now, hallowed is a word which isn't often used, as you'll know, but it actually is a very special word. It is sacred. It's to give um, mention of the highest praise to our Father. Thy kingdom come. The coming of God's kingdom is seen as a divine gift and to be prayed for. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the request that thy will be done is God's invitation to join him to making things down here the way they are up there. However, recently, or not very recently, but recently I, whilst praying, felt the Holy Spirit come through me, that was Jesus actually giving us another another insight because thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To me, that's speaking of the millennium as well. When Jesus comes down to rule for that millennium, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven because all evil will be removed and it will be as God first planned it to be. The next line is give us this day our daily bread. This one is so important. Many think that it's to do with feed us daily with what we just need to live off. Um, whereas it still can be that. But to me, I think of John 6, 35 and John 6, 51, because Jesus told us that he is our bread. So to me, by asking our Father to give us this day our daily bread is to make sure that Christ is in our life every single day because we should be praying this prayer every single day so in doing so we're asking for our father to give us this day our daily bread so in other words jesus the next line is and forgive us our trespasses or debtors so here it is with this prayer prayed daily we are asking god to forgive us on a daily basis for any sins that we've done daily 
You see, we're all sinners. Even if we, we don't intentionally want to sin, we still do on a daily basis, no matter how small. So in praying this prayer every day, we are actually asking him on a daily basis to forgive us our sins. The next line is, and forgive them the trespass against us. Well, just as we ask our Father to forgive us, we can't expect forgiveness if we can't do the same for others who sin against us. So we're asking for forgiveness and we're also acknowledging that we need to forgive others as well. And lead us not into temptation. Well, temptation is all around us. We're asking for guidance through the Holy Spirit to help us see when it is being offered to us. We're asking to help stay strong and avoid it. So, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Well, evil and temptation virtually go hand in hand. We are again asking as a child of God to avoid all evil and for him to, to steer us or for the Holy Spirit to steer us in the right direction. The next part of the prayer is actually a beautiful ending towards the prayer. And although it's not actually in the Bible under Matthew or Luke's version of it, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So as much as this is such a beautiful ending, it's nice to actually say it to close it off. Or if you choose not to say it, that's fine too. But it's not a made up ending. It basically comes from Chronicles chapter 29, verses 11 to 13, which reads, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O God, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honour come from you, and you rule over all. In your hands are power and might, and in your hands is to make great and give strength to all. And now we thank you, O God and praise your glorious name. So now that we've actually gone through line by line, I'm giving you my interpretation and I'd love for you guys to share your interpretation or, or let me know if any of these lines have helped you. So let's begin again and we'll say the prayer in its entirety right now and we'll say it with meaning for each line as we begin. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 